All right, Sunday, uh, Saturday morning, not Sunday morning, uh, just working on the crankcase. Um, this was, majority of this was modeled by Toby Pittman, and um, Toby's been very busy uh, recently. So I've done pretty much all of the main elements on the, uh, the bike itself, just down to small pieces now. So I thought I'd just come and finish off some of this engine. Uh, it's been interesting to... Uh, take a hold of Toby's work and um, just see how he's done it and uh, just continue along with that. I actually did this um, this section here and Toby's done this part here. Um, I stitched the Indian logo into the front here and also um, reworked this part as well. So, um, so I have been a little involved in, in parts of it, but now I'm actually coming I've come over to the crankcase and I've really been reworking this whole section here to stitch in the um, the areas where the cylinder the cylinders attached to the crankcase these pieces here so let's turn on the uh, let's see I just turn on those if I can find them um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Engine block out, main engine temp. I think it's in here. So yeah, there you go. So you can see how the cylinders sit on top of those, like that. But the the bottoms weren't attached, so I've had to come through and well, I start attaching those to the crankcase. And it looks, I mean, it looks good. It looks great when they're attached. It really works. But there's still a still a fair bit to do. And that's what I'm going to keep working with today. So say hi if you're in the in the chat, if you're live. If you're watching this after the recording, you know, if you have any questions, just leave them in the chat. See how far I get. I'll just drink my extra large coffee. If you have any questions about switching from Cinema 4D to Blender and what your thoughts are on latest release of Cinema 4D? Don't have to be an ex-Cinema 4D user. So I'm going to turn these off. All right. I'm going to hide that too, actually. Get rid of that. Now, if I hit the period key, is it the period key? Ah, let's see if I remember. Uh, sorry. Don't want to do that. Forgetting my shortcuts. Yeah, it is the period key. I was wrong. With my cursor, um, I was right, sorry. With my cursor over the outliner, if I just hit the period key, which is the uh, greater than symbol on the keyboard, that will scroll to the active element. Move my cursor over there, period key, and it scrolls. That's really handy. So I was right the first time. All right, so I've been kind of jumping around on this. Just trying to get this as neat as possible, as quad as possible, and get this stitched in. So I think I was around to this side. Yesterday what I did was... Um, uh, let's see. Yesterday what I did was selected a whole section here. Let me just come over to... I haven't got much space here. Come over to uh, my vertex groups and select. You can see I selected that group of polygons, that group of faces. And if I come over to my outliner and just turn on the bool object. There it is there. This is the bool object that Toby created um, onto which he retopologized. So, but there were sections of it after I'd looked at the engine um, that were incorrect. Like this f down here, for example, this is, this is all weird. And this, this part here is incorrect. But the majority of it is correct and I'd added all of these polygons in here and they were all 
bumpy. So what I did was I created a vertex group and then I just used shrink wrapping with the vertex group just to shrink wrap this selected section onto the ball. And that evened that out and rounded it all out. You can see that sticks there nicely now. So that's what I was doing yesterday. Hey Sebastian. Yeah, um Z remesher, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It's no big deal for me because I've I've had Z remesher in um in ZBrush for a long time. <laughs> so it's like okay. And also in um in Blender I use quad remesh and I've I've found little to no difference between quad remesh and Z remesh. So Great, great for Cinema 4D users who haven't had a solution. Absolutely, it's 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 good news. But um, you have to forgive me if I'm not that excited about what's in Cinema 4D because I ha I just don't use it anymore. Um, so it's like yeah, it's a little little bit too late for me on that on that respect. So I don't really have an opinion. Good question though. Um, so let's see. So like I said, I even that all out using the shrink wrap with the vertex group and now I've come into this side and I'm starting to stitch this in and you can see the you know the loops don't add up they don't um, they're not even um, I've got to reconcile this part here with this part here and stitch it all together so let's have a go and if you're wondering here's the actual crankcase here it, it does look different from what I'm doing um, I asked Toby this week why he hadn't used this rounded um, style and that was because it was an oversight but that's okay I'm not going to go ahead and redo that I'm just going to keep it flat um, and you can see it actually comes very close to the case as well this um, uh, this outlet mine isn't exact it's close but it's it's not exact so it's still a great modeling exercise, but it isn't identical by any stretch of the imagination. Really impossible to get it exact, exactly the same without either um, a CAD file that you can retopologize onto or really detailed um, guide images. So I'm getting it close. In the end, it'll look, it'll look pretty good. So what I want to do is I want to join these up so what I might do is just snap these verts onto these faces and that'll make it a little bit easier so I just want to make sure that face snapping is on um, I've got my move tool selected I do tend to like using these tools even coming from cinema coming from cinema 4d yeah, obviously cinema 4d users are used to this rather than gr and s shortcuts I use gr and s occasionally but I kind of switch between the two I do kind of like having this that I can click onto and then I can hold down control see and just snap like that just snap to the face just grab these and just snap them up to the face like that see once I get these lined up then I can work out how to join these edges up so I might just select that edge control click to select that one snap that just go through and just grab the verts it's nice to be doing a live stream again. Haven't done one for a while. I did a series of basic tutorials on modeling in Blender when I was learning to model in Blender early last year, or I guess mid last year. That ended up being about 11 tutorials. So um, that was really good, but I wanted to get back onto this bike. Um, and once I finish the bike, I might do a whole bunch more modeling tutorials for Blender. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I'm going to come back to um, Vertex here. Actually, what I might do is just make sure that this is all the way out there. And here too, just so I can snap to it. Boop, like that. Okay, now as long as face is selected. So notice how 
snapping's not actually turned on. I've rarely turned snapping on. I'm just using the control key just to just to jump into snapping, just to invoke, you know, the command. So good. I love it. It's nice to see some of the um, tools that are in Blender now in Cinema 4D in the latest version. Things like poke and flatten and relax and make circle and that's all good. But there, are, I definitely think there's still things I would miss from Blender if I went back. Nice, Sebastian. Excellent. Hey, Instinct. Uh, well, I've done it, Instinct. So I'm the perfect example. I, I was modeling in Cinema 4D for about, I don't know, seven years. And uh, I wouldn't go back now. So what does that say to you? Um, I think it's well worth it. It does. It is a little frustrating at first. Excuse me, but once you get over that initial shock, um, far out. I love blend. I love modeling in Blender. Come on. I want to snap to that. Why isn't that snapping? Let's see. Should be. There we go. Yeah. Um, I've done it. You can do it too. Absolutely. There's just some great, great tools. And yeah, I mean, other, other apps have tools that Blender doesn't have, but, you know, you have to weigh up what's what's most valuable to you. You know, you've got to, obviously, you have to pay for other applications as well. Um, I was excited to see what I could do in a, in a piece of software that was free. You know, I was, I was interested to see just how, how good Blender might be. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm very happy with it. It's really fast too. Okay, I've got them all snapped in there now. So maybe just these ones here. Just snapping them just to line them up. Hey Evan, how are you, man? I haven't I haven't seen you for ages. I've seen you um, jumping in and out of um, Discord to see your name pop up. But uh, yeah, I thought about you the other day. Still tr still trucking along. Thanks, Instinct. I appreciate that, man. Okay, so I've got that all snapped up there now. Um, so what I need to do is link those up. I know I've got to keep working my way down here, <laughs> which I will do. Um, but I'm just going to do this section first. I like to jump around, keeps it keeps it interesting. Um, right, so what I might do is just turn on edge snapping and bring this and snap this to here wherever I can. Just snap these in. It's a shitload of work, this motorbike. I realized I got an anniversary image of, uh, I don't know if it was Instagram or Twitter, but I got an anniversary um, of two years since I tweeted that I was going to do a motorbike. So it's been two, two years. Just bloody... Um, fitting this in whenever I can. You know, with Toby's expert help, it's been it's been easier. But um, I don't know, I'm still a few months away, I think, of having it ready to unwrap and uh, then texture. But she's going to be worth it. And it's been two years of, you know, fantastic modeling practice.
I'm just snapping these in, just holding down control. Oh, missed that one. <laughs> yeah, two years, man. It said, um, I think the tweet said, I think it was a tweet. It said, um, I'm, uh, I think I'm going to do a bike and this one looks really interesting or something like that. And, uh, <laughs> but you know, persistence, you know, that day when I've got that final render and not only have we, um, and I say we, cause it's Toby and I, although I've done the majority of it. Um, not only did we start in cinema 40 and switch to blender halfway through, um, it would have been, uh, you know, finished. It'll be finished and textured, um, all all using Blender and rendered using Blender. So it's pretty exciting. And it's not a fucking sci-fi cube. <laughs> Forgive me. All right. So now I need to get these ones. All working out now I've done it on the other side I tweeted this out during the week it's got this kind of geometry going on so I might just take a quick shot of that just to remind myself of what I did just keep that up there I'm getting old I forget <laughs> oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna texture the whole thing in substance yeah, which I, I probably shouldn't. I should probably just drop procedural materials on in Blender, and not even unwrap this bastard. But um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna unwrap in Ryzen UV, and I'm gonna texture it in um, in Substance Painter. And I'm not gonna put heaps of scratches and shit on it. It's gonna be it's gonna be showroom quality. So I'm not gonna be going in and using multiple multiple layers in Substance. But um. I still think it'll be fun to do in substance. And then my machine will crash when it tries to render it, so I'll come back and texture it using procedurals in Blender. <laughs> yeah, thanks um, about the mouse, Razor. <laughs> okay, so... I've taken that image, so I'm just going to come back to the other side now. One thing I that kind of does annoy me in Blender is this. I know you can change the size of the verts, but I don't know. They seem to be just so strong. Maybe I should change the color of them or something because, you know, when I roll out, it's just like all you can see is black dots. So it's, it's no big issue, but, you know, it's just one of those little things. Okay, so I've actually pulled that across. I need to bring that back. So this is one of the things that I love about Blender. I could go normal, but see how I can't get the right orientation to snap it in line with that. So this is something I use all the time. It's just selecting an edge that has the right orientation and then just choosing a custom orientation like that. I should be able to... Oh, that didn't work, actually. Undo that. Let's try that again. Try this one. There we go. Now I can select that. And now I can drag that back on the Y. And then just snap that in line. But I've got to come and turn on vertex snapping. going up a little bit but let's try this one I'm a little bit pedantic with my models there we go and I've come around to the other side I just want to I want to do, which side do I want to do? I want to do here. This is where I'm working. Right. I'm just going to quickly turn the air conditioning on. Just hang on a sec.
gets really hot in this little office. <coughs> Snapping NC4D is pretty bad, yeah. <laughs> Sci-fi cube, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I've got a certain amount of edge loops on this part that Tobe did, and I've got a certain amount of edge loops on this part that Tobe did, and now I've got to reconcile those. So I have to get those to match. Now some of these I can actually remove, just control X and just dissolve those because it's just not gonna be necessary. Uh, so then I can just sort of, you know, drag this and just sort of snap that with the control key. And then, I mean, I can, there's a few ways I can do this. I've done this in plenty of tutorials. I can, you know, select that one and that one and do ML to merge to last. I'm just going to quickly save here. I could turn on um, auto merge verts and I could grab that vert and I hold down control and then snap and that does it as well um, just turn that off I don't like auto merge because sometimes when you're working with a model that has a lot of close verts you, it can um, uh, merge them automatically and you go back to the other side of your model and find out the whole thing has been crushed because merge have been uh, verts have been joined together and that's kind of like um, you know welding in um, in uh, now, what is it in, in Cinema 4D? It's, um, um, I can't even remember now. It's so rusty. You know, cleaning up an object, <coughs> like optimizing, right? <coughs> optimizing in Cinema 4D. Always got to be really careful. But my favorite tool, once again, is the Polyquilt tool. I've set a shortcut, Alt-Q. Polyquilt's an add-on that you can download. Um, so Alt-Q, and I just grab that one and just weld it to that one. So any other ones I can do here? I'm going to do this one as well. Can I grab that one? Doesn't want to get it, so I'm going to get it from there and then just do that one as well. Okay, so now we've got a start of a connection there. <coughs> Let's just bring this one back up here. So once again, I have a flat section here, so I can probably just bring that there and snap that in line with that one. Just join that. Yeah, cycles and EV are great. I still miss light linking though. Light linking for me was, you know, really important part of um, uh, Cinema 4D and uh, Redshift. No, I never went to college or university. I never went to college. <laughs> I, I, I crashed out of high school. I learned how to model just by modeling. Because I just really dig modeling. I'm just going to move this um, shortcut thingy out of the way. Like that. There we go. Right. I don't know. Cycles doesn't have a cartoony look for me. Um, <laughs> thanks, Michael. <laughs> Greetings to Italy. Now, I'm glad you like the Aussie accent because it's the only accent I have. I could try and do an Italian accent, but that would be very bad. 
Okay, so um, what I might do is just, I'll just alt click. No, I won't do that. I need to put an edge in there. So um, what I'll do is hit the knife tool, K, just make a loop there. I'll make an edge there and then just select those two ML. Like I said, it's another way of joining things up. Now I can, I still won't do that. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just select this, this and this and hit F to fill. Right, so I can get rid of that one. And this one will actually be coming around here like this. Like that. And I have all quads there. So that's okay. Now I've got one that goes right through the middle here. So I'll just bring that one down a little bit. Control R to add a loop to that one. Oops, went straight through. So addictive doing this. Once again, I'll just do ML and just join those up like that. Okay, so if I grab this one here and bring that across there, it's going to give me that massive pole. So I don't want to do that. So what I'll do, I'll just fill that one. It's going to give me an issue there as well. So what have I got here? I might just quickly put a cut through there. Bring that out. Now I'll just join that up there like that. That could just be a temporary edge. Now I can fill that F. So often, often what I'll do, I find it much easier to interpret the geometry, to interpret the topology when I've got all the holes filled up. It's a little bit harder sometimes when there's holes in there. Okay, so, and I don't always see the solution straight away. Sometimes it takes me a little bit of mucking around. There we go. Now what I'll do is, um, I'll take all of this And I've said it before, sometimes I'll find I'll do it wrong. Um, and doing it wrong will allow me to see how to do it right. <laughs> okay, so here I'm going to use a paid add-on. This is one that I was able to thankfully get Kashiro to, um, to create, which is um, Slide Edge. And this is like the Edge clone, uh, cloning an edge in Cinema 4D. I'm just going to quickly save. I've got mine set to Shift Alt R. Is it Shift Alt R? Uh, no, Shift Alt S for slide. Yeah, and it does tend to be a bit jumpy. See how that jumped out like that? And this is one of the problems I have with it. And now it's. Uh, did it hang? No. Ah, uh, there, there you go. It just popped out. It came up the wrong side. So I'm just going to undo. This is one of the problems with it. It's a really useful tool, but it is a little jumpy. So Shift Alt S. I'm going to hold down Shift. Come on. And see, I'm not getting. Oh, there we go. There it is. So shift. Come on. And obviously, by now, I probably could have done it a different way. There we go. There it goes. Here it comes. See, it just needs to be a little bit less touchy. And 
it would be a perfect tool because that's the same as cloning an edge in Cinema 4D. There we go. That's called slide edge. Yeah, I, I, I make backups. I have all my backups set up. Just double checking that now. Um, I think that's probably pretty good. If I just tab into object mode, that looks pretty neat. Tab. Now I'm going to have to put some edges on here as well, I think, some loops. So here and here. Just control B for bevel. Just hold down P. That'll give me a shape of one, which gives me a solid bevel. So that obviously causes some issues here. Let's just see what we can do here. If I go shift X. Obviously, that's um, given me um, n-gons there. See you, Sebastian. 2 a.m., jeez. So what's everybody modeling at the moment? what I can do here. That's one of the things I loved about modeling is just the the process of solving topology. It's the real it's the puzzle that I really enjoy. Um, there we go, that's all quads there. They are fairly long so I'll just slide this one across a bit. And these, these single machined objects that are all one part are some of the hardest things to, um, to model, you know, uh, to poly model and reconcile as quads. <laughs> you know, you've always got that sneaky little engon or triangle. And not that I'm worried about engons or triangles. Yeah, obviously they, they have their uses. But I'm generally always trying for um, the the cleanest possible way to do something. It's part of the challenge and part of the fun. Obviously for client work, if it looks right and the client's happy and it works, then I'm not going to be so pedantic with it. But while I'm doing my own stuff, I really like to spend the time to see if I can solve things because it makes me a better modeler. You just see, you, you have that x-ray vision, that Toby likes to call it, and you can see the topology in the topology. You can see the solution in the topology. Okay, that looks pretty nice. So it's already looking quite nice around there. It's all joined up. See how we've got a little bit of um, faceting there? That's because I need to right click and just hit shade smooth again. Obviously I need to run that loop around there as well. If I go control R and just bring that one there, what I can do is just put that in there. That's a good idea. Just jam that in there like that. I wouldn't normally put control loops in so early, but um, 
Yeah, you kind of um I'm kind of just continuing on with what's already been done and there were some control loops in there already. I'll go around there and add those ones in later. Actually, I'll just quickly do this one here. And that one is not going to loop around, so let's just come around here. And see if we can use slide edge again. So once again, I'll just quickly save. Let's try this again. So it's going to zoom out a little bit. So Shift Alt S is my shortcut. There we go. Come on, out you come. There it is. All right. Did it work? Yeah, there it is. Now it still went up again. I didn't want it to go up. Try that again. So Kashira, if you're watching this, you can see how jumpy this is. I think it's got something to do with the magnification maybe. Come on, back you come. It's a little bit infuriating because it's such a good tool. But it just doesn't behave itself in all situations. I'm going to cancel that and just use loop cut. So I'll just grab these ones here, see if it works better just with these. There we go. See, it works better with that selection. It still jumps. Ah. If I hold down shift, and then just make some adjustments to it. That'll give me small increments. There we go. Like that. Okay. The manual way, obviously, is just to cut in. Cut in loops. So when that tool improves a little bit, it'll be perfect. Looking nice. I do have to cut this little ridge in here as well. I'll do that later. Okay. I keep working my way around. Grab the poly quilt and just hold down control and just remove that.
I'm just holding down the uh, modifier key. That's shift just to create a new new face there. What I'll do is I will go uh, Alt Q and just get rid of that one. I'm just using Machine Tool Smart Face just by pressing four, and that will also create a face there. Same again for there. Oops. Oops. Not sure if you can hear that banging, but my um, I think my son is cleaning his blinds in his bedroom. Now that's this piece here is very close to that, so I've got to work work out the best way to reconcile that. Um So why don't I just join it up and then we'll just see. So I jump from various tools that do the same thing. Various shortcuts. Oh, that's so close. We've got two edges there and one edge there, right? So let's think about that. Um, Okay, I'm going to save that. And I like to just try different things and see if the solution reveals itself. Obviously, if I get rid of that, oops, that creates an end gone there. So I'd have to have to bring that across there like that, which creates an end gone there. But it does fix this here like that so if I go uh, I don't know if that's going to work if I go in L there just take from one place and you've got to give it back somewhere else now isn't end gone a big problem there well not at all the the solution the, the result is perfect. So in in the end, you know, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't bother with it. I just leave it as an end gone, because that will become a quad under subdivision. But um, like I said, I just like to see if I can resolve these things. Obviously, I could just quickly just stick it in as a triangle there, and I could just stick a cut down there, and then slide that out. And then just loop it around like that. And if I needed an extra loop there, which I might do, that could actually work out quite well. I hope that's useful, Wallaby 8. <laughs> yeah. 
it takes a bit of time to understand this kind of topology and this kind of work. Not everything can be done with booleans. A lot of great things can be, that's for sure. Let's just quickly save this. I just want to come back and turn on this section at the front here so we can see how that looks. So, uh, forward controls. Um, it's a big section, it's this section here. There, see? So you can see how this has to fit. Uh, it has to all fit nice and snugly because it's been um, you know, split off of this. And if I keep stealing edges away or removing edges from this back section, then it's no longer going to fit snugly. And it's pretty good, but you can see there's the prob there's a problem there. I haven't I've taken an edge out. You can see how it doesn't register properly. It's amazing. Toby did this piece. It, this just blows my mind. Look at that piece there. That was all done retopologizing onto a Boolean that he created. It's like, fuck. <laughs> it's awesome. It just looks awesome. It looks like a heart, doesn't it? Yeah, so because this is already in register with this other part, I can't go changing this topology much. I've got to be really careful. A bit of a corner there as well I want to get rid of. I'm going to round those out a bit more. See how this looks with um, the cavity turned on. Look at that. I'm going to get some nice close-ups in the render. I'm just using machine tools here, just the um, shading and overlay pie. I've mapped it to the, um, the button 5 on my Microsoft IntelliMouse, button 5, which is a really good one for that. <laughs> well, there are some... Um, it's going to go real fast. There are some... Uh, there is one blueprint. Well, not really a blueprint, but you can see there's a an image from the uh, manual. And the crazy thing is, we'd already started modeling the bike before we found these images, so we're kind of you know squeezing things in, and it doesn't really fit that well, um, but it's close. So we're using it as a rough. Think of this as a rough guide, but yeah, it's been hard. That's why I have lots and lots of references. And like I said earlier, it doesn't necessarily look exactly the same as the original bike, but uh, yeah, it's close. Close-ish. Although you wouldn't want to ride it. Let's turn that off again. And just remember that we have to take care of this Geometry. Okay. Just slide that side that out a bit. So where were we? That's right, we were down in here and I brought that loop out, didn't I? So um I might just bring that back again just so we can see whether I do, whether I can use that. Yeah, see I've actually removed one there. So what if I just tab, I could easily just put another one in there. So what I'll do is just loop that in, just hold down control, I'm snapping to that vert there. And I can just select these two and just press J to join them up. Go back and watch um, uh, Modeling a Motorcycle in Blender, uh, in Cinema 4D, uh, Blender. I think it's about um, five or six streams ago when I first started working in Blender. And I thought, I thought 
mistakenly that I could do a live stream having only used Blender for a couple of weeks and what a train wreck that was. But hopefully you can see now that I've actually come a long way with Blender just through practice. So I'll just tab again and what I'm going to do is come down and Let's have some space here. Come down to my, what are these called, modifier properties and just turn on edge edit mode and also on cage. So now I can see that under subdivision, it, it's pretty close. It's pretty, pretty good actually. I don't have, I don't think I have to do anything else to that. So that loop um, was worthwhile. So it's interesting. Um, I removed that before, but now I needed to add something back in just to make that work properly. So there's generally usually a solution for you to be able to use quads generally. I'm going to have to round that out. See how that's all sort of squished up there as well? <laughs> you started working as a 3D designer today. Well, that's that's pretty fresh. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, um, good ref board. What you can do is you can just right click and choose um, uh, where is it? Uh, I've forgotten as well. Um, images arrange. So you've got to select them all first. Images arrange control P. There we go. Now I haven't used Fusion 360. Some people seem to enjoy it. Okay, I've got to come back and turn off on cage and edit mode. You can see how that's that's all squished up there. It's all weird looking. That shape is not good. Might just select these these three here. Maybe not that one. Select those two and just use. Uh, let's see, uh, edit loop tools flatten, just to flatten those out. And just use, I'll use G stretch just to straighten that. It's good to clean up as you go, keep things neat. So I want to maybe, let's see, hit three and hold down shift and control. I just click that one, that'll select that. Um, I have been using this one here too. This is a paid add-on called Power Select. And I can just double click a face like that. That's pretty cool. And Power Select also has an option to double click a loop if you're in edge mode. Um, but I don't have that turned on. There's a way to make that select a loop as well, somewhere up here. If you come from Cinema 4D. So I've got that selected, so I'm just going to flatten that out just so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to turn on, see if I can use this other add-on that I've got. Option uh, So this is Rotate Face. Just had an update this week. It's a cheap add-on, but it's not doing what I expect there. I haven't got the latest version, but that's often a great little tool. You can see it didn't quite do what I expected there. Haven't used it a lot. So this is actually, no, it's not, it's part of machine tools. It's part of the Deuce X. So 
So that's the paid version of machine tools. Sorry. I'm just going to rotate just by hitting R. There you go. That was easy. I have to pull this one out a little bit. Now, I want to pull this vert left. Now, I could just grab my move tool and do that, like that, which is probably the way I would do it. But you can also hit GG, and you can slide along that edge, and then hit um, C to turn on clamp, and then you can slide that out as well. That's super cool. I love that. Yeah, Master Zeon's a good modeler. No, I don't use hard ops or box cutter. I probably could get good value out of it, yeah, but I'm just, I just like to, um, I like to do it this way. And then, frankly, I just haven't had time to really spend looking into that. And when I do tutorials, I want to show, um, uh, these kind of techniques. They're kind of little apps in themselves, those ones. They're, they're pretty, they look pretty good, but they're not, I, I know, I guess I tend to see a lot of sci-fi stuff with those tools. Not criticizing them because I haven't used them. I do have Mesh Machine on this, um, on this, but I just haven't found a use for it yet. Okay, so I have to sort this out here. These are quite close. So what I'll do is turn off all this other stuff. That's better. I need to start thinking about bringing these ones up. I just quickly just extrude that out just so I've got a face there and what I'll do is I'll just do what I did before is just come up to um, local mode turn on face snap and just snap those up just hold them down control Bring those all up like that. Snap all these down. probably could bool this in but you know I'd have to clean up the bool as well so it doesn't really make a lot of difference okay so that's got that lined up that's good hey Ahmed yes haven't seen you for ages No, it wouldn't make me go back to cinema. Nice to see some of those tools that are in Blender uh, in the modeling. But um, I was surprised, and I, I could be wrong, and this is not a criticism, I was surprised. I looked through the 
um, NAB sessions that were last week. There's you know hours and hours of um, live sessions from NAB and and I did just skip through, but um, I didn't see anything that was focusing on the new modeling tools. So you know that's that doesn't really mean much, but um, I don't know. Maybe they're not a priority. Once again, just using Machine Tools Smart Face just to close that up. And mach Machine Tools is a free add-on. There is a paid version called the Deuce X version that has a really good rotation um, add-on as well. Now I want to turn on Vertex Snapping. Snap that to that. There we go, that's good. So I know that's right, so I'll just quickly just bring these together. Need another one there. Snap that one. Uh, select this one. Actually, I've got that coming through, so I've got an extra loop there. So I'll just stick one in there. Nah, I don't want to do that. So what I'll do is I'll just hide this one, H. Now I can terminate that loop. Then Alt H. There we go. Quickly snap that in there. Okay, now I can just do this. Close that up. There we go. Get in there. Yeah, lots of ZBrush. It's not missing anymore, Ahmed. There's a plugin for that. There's an add-on for that. I pested um, Kashiro so much that he made one. I'll show you, look. Select the edge. And you can go up to, I think it's, um, is it mesh? Oh no, I think you have to right click. Let's hide this. Slide edge down here, see? There you go. Hold down the shift key for smaller increments. Where'd it go? I just accepted it. There it is. It's called Slide Edge. You can get it on um, Gumroad or, or um, Blender Tools. Blender Market. Uh, it's just a little bit um, sensitive, but it does what you expect. Doesn't have preserved curvature though, but they just use set flow for that. So what you do is you, you know, select the loop, Shift Alt S, just to slide that out. Where'd it go? And this is what I'm saying. It's it's very sensitive. Where is it? Mind you, the, the slide tool in Cinema 4D has been buggy for ages. I don't know what it's like now. Anyway, I'm going to undo that. But what, is, what I wanted to say was, instead of preserve curvature, just put a loop in there. I can just use um, set flow. So set flow will fix the curvature. So a few workarounds. I've gotten used to them now. All right, so can I bring this one? Let me just save. I'm going to grab the um, the Polyquill add-on again. And please don't complain about me using add-ons. I got lots of tutorials where I use the vanilla stuff, which you can watch. But I don't think it's worth sticking just to vanilla workflow just for the sake of it.
better that I show you what I think works in the real world. So I've got a I've got that extra loop in there. I'm gonna keep it fairly short today. I've got things to do. Okay, so I'll bring this one. That's fairly flat. I may have to turn this on again just to see where that goes. See, I've actually lifted it up. So this one has to come down. I can't afford to have this many loops um, in here because I've, I've got to reconcile them somewhere up here. So I'm trying to match this curvature here with less loops. It just means sliding a few loops around and getting it close. That's straighter now, that's good. GG. Now what have I got turned on? Vertex snap. Come on, you should be able to snap to that. There we go. Going to turn drag on to select box for the move tool and just in x ray mode, just select all of those verts. No, wrong ones, these ones. I'll just join these and then I'll just join these. So you should be able to take this one to here, like that. Still thinking about this section down here. Let's see. Mm. I can't go placing loops, but I probably could get away with one loop in there. As it stands, it's still a little different in the shape. It's pretty close though. Hopefully I haven't changed Toby's um, geometry too much. If I just select this and just fill it, F, let's take a look at this. So we've got a pole here. Do I prefer to work in orthographic mode? Um, well, I work in both. I don't, in cinema, what I used to do is, um, I said control alt Q. Yeah, control alt Q gives you quad mode. And I thought when I moved to Blender, oh, I'm gonna miss this quad mode. Um, it doesn't work the same way as cinema, but I never use it now. <laughs> I just hold down the middle mouse button and the alt key and I snap to my qu my orthographic views, just like that. And it's just so fast. So I don't ever look at things in two views anymore. I just completely change the way I work. Now if I want to line that up with the um, reference image, see I can just, I've got my reference image to not view in perspective mode. So 
hopefully I won't get a crash here. There we go. So when I drag middle mouse and rotate out of orthographic view, I, it, you don't see the image. But then when I hold down Alt and snap in, then I can see the image. It's just a, such a fast way to work. Let's turn those images off for now. So what time is it? 10.45. So I'm going to have to stop soon, but I'm just going to see if I can solve this. I want to try and keep the streams a little shorter so they're a little more digestible when you don't watch them live. Um, okay, let's see. I mean, it, like I said, it's not a problem that necessarily a problem that there's a triangle there. It is a pole, but you can see it's looks fine. I just uh, share it smooth there. I do need to reconcile this vert though, this loop. Um, I bought it, Ahmed, I bought it from, um, I bought it from Gumroad and you get up, yeah, you get updates. Okay. Come on, I can work this out. I want to get rid of that pole. Just going to slide these. Uh, let's see if I can go like this. Then obviously I've got an extra loop that has to be terminated somewhere, but it's potentially potentially there's somewhere down here where I'll need that. That's the way I might go for now. We'll bring this one over to here. Yeah, well actually I do need that. Or do I? Yeah, I do. So I need this one here. So I'm going to come up. Take that one there. So it's really important to look at the rest of your model or, you know, connecting parts. Rather than me trying to work out some funky way to terminate that there, I actually need that loop because there's this little orphan loop, um, unterminated loop sitting here saying, hey, let's get together. All right, so if I go um, just going to grab my knife tool to bring this through here like this. A little bit pinchy there. So I might just bring this one down. Like that. Now I do still have that there. And obviously that will add a um, an issue in that nice curve. And I can't remove it from here because that will give me nothing to work with. All right, so let's try this. Let's get rid of it. Grab this one. This may not work. I'm going to come back and turn on 
actually I've already got them turned on I've just got them soloed if I bring this down I've still got this big problem here I need more loops I can fix that though so I'll grab that and that and once again come down and just turn on edit and cage bring that down not too far still a little bit out of alignment better so what I'll do is turn those off again and try this Shift, uh, shift, control, alt. That didn't work. Yeah. Just line that one up again. Alt H just to unhide that. And just loop that around. Like that. Oh, that's um that's not good. This is where I can just hold down control and snap. Always looking at your model from different angles. It's easy to fix because I can just quickly snap these into alignment. GG. It just give me quite a you know stretchy, stretchy quad there. That's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. But no six-sided poles, and I'm able to fix that curve in there, and also not affect that curvature by adding a loop all the way through. So these looping strategies, coming through here like this, it's just all over this model. They're really useful. Okay, so that solved it. That's really good. So that's not too bad. I still have to take this and curve this out. It'd be nice if this was just a little a little rounder I'll just grab that one and this one oops 
Okay, I want those. Let's bring those round like that. Back a little bit. And I could just go grab these and just flatten these out. Just hit N and go to Loop Tools. Loop Tools, flatten like that. And the same for that one. That should just give it a little bit of roundness like that. That's that's pretty good. It's close enough. So that's pretty nice. Um, got that all looking pretty good through there. It's all quads. No six-sided poles. Haven't messed up this much, uh, this too much. That's connecting quite nicely. I've obviously got to come, got to come all the way down here as well. This actually, um, this edge here comes all the way down here. So I've got to build all that in. And it'll look great when it's done. It'll look particularly good when it's textured. Have to feature this engine um, as a separate object, I think. That looks pretty nice. No errors, all looking really clean. Very good. So, I mean, the rest of this is pretty much uh, rinse and repeat. So I'm going to be working my way through here and just stitching that on. Um, and then that side will be finished, actually. It's almost done, that side, which is terrific. And then it's just finishing off this side. And then I can go and, um, and just add whatever's missing on the engine. Then I'm going to go and add all of the um, little tiny pieces on the bike, the cables and shit like that. And then if it looks good from, you know, certain angles that I want to use as hero shots, then I'm going to call it done. So it will be a little bit longer, but you know, it's all good practice. Okay. So thanks for um, hanging around, everyone that's in the chat. Appreciate it. Um, just going to answer this last question. Hey, Fabio. Yeah, adding edges and maintaining curvature. Well, there's. You, I, I showed that before. There's, there's no way you, you can slide and preserve curvature like you can in Cinema 4D in one movement, as far as I know. But you can, um, you know, if I go grab that and curve that up like that and just move that in. So that's got that little bump in it. If I go control R and add a knife cut, I can right click to center that and then I can change the um, uh, smoothness. See how I can actually adjust the smoothness of that. So that can you can you have to eyeball it, of course. A better way to do it is just to put the loop in, and then just use the um, add-on set flow, which is a free add-on. And set flow is the same as preserved curvature in Cinema 4D. Okay. So there are probably other ways to do it, but that's um, that's the way I do it. If you find another way that does it all in one, let me know. All right. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you in the next stream or tutorial.